Let's learn about national security. Mr. Owl, what is national security? I know. National security means that we have the armed forces to protect our country. Right. However, defence is only part of national security. National security covers a lot more issues, including economic, technological, cyber, social, ecological security, and so on. Can you think of any examples? Um, I've got one. It's reported on the news that international hackers steal business data or commit fraud and even attack government systems through computer hacking. I guess this is an example of cyber security. I've got one too. In response to COVID-19, a country has to produce an enormous amount of face masks, develop vaccines and implement various anti-epidemic measures. This is an example of public health security, isn't it? How smart you are! Many countries have laws to safeguard national security. For example, France, Australia, the United Kingdom, the United States of America, Canada, and so on. How about Hong Kong? Every one of us loves Hong Kong, our home. We all hope that our families and people around us can lead a happy and stable life. For the sake of Hong Kong's continuous development and long-term prosperity, the National Security Law has been enacted. We all know Hong Kong is an inalienable part of our country. The Hong Kong Special Administrative Region is a local administrative region which enjoys a high degree of autonomy with the implementation of one country, two systems, and Hong Kong people administering Hong Kong. It comes directly under the Central People's Government. National security affairs are of utmost importance to the whole country. So it is the right and duty of the central authorities to enact the national security law to safeguard national security and its people's interests. The National People's Congress, the highest state organ of power, authorized the NPC Standing Committee to enact the national security law which was passed on the 30th of June, 2020. The National Security Law, a national law, has been listed in Annex 3 to the Basic Law, according to Article 18 of the Basic Law, and applied by way of promulgation in the Hong Kong SAR. The purpose of legislation of the National Security Law is to prevent, suppress, and punish crimes endangering national security, which are clearly stipulated as Secession, subversion, terrorist activities, and collusion with a foreign country or with external elements to endanger national security. The Office for Safeguarding National Security of the Central People's Government is set up by the CPG in the Hong Kong SAR. The Committee for Safeguarding National Security of the Hong Kong SAR, chaired by the Chief Executive, assumes primary responsibility for safeguarding national security in the region. Hmm, we already have the police to maintain law and order, don't we? You're right. The Hong Kong Police Force is the law enforcement agency of the national security law. Except in extremely rare circumstances, the Hong Kong SAR has jurisdiction over cases concerning offences under the national security law. The Hong Kong Police Force, the Department of Justice, and the judiciary that exercises independent judicial power will be responsible for investigation, prosecution, and trial respectively. With the national security law, we can still freely voice our opinions, right? Of course. The national security law only punishes an extremely small minority of criminals protects the vast majority of Hong Kong residents and maintains the law and order of Hong Kong. The legitimate rights and freedoms enjoyed by Hong Kong residents, such as the freedom of the press, of speech, of procession, of association, of assembly and of demonstration, will not be affected. We are still young. How can we contribute to our society and country? I know. We must be law-abiding. Why? 
Imagine if some students did whatever they wanted in the school, like skipping classes and running around here and there. What would the lesson be like? Everyone could hardly focus on learning, and there would even be accidents. <laughs> exactly. It is the same with society. Rights and freedoms are not unrestricted. While we are enjoying rights and freedoms, we are also obliged to abide by the law. Imagine if. Wow, masterpiece! But look at here, no graffiti. I have my freedom of creativity. Why can't I draw here? In fact, most freedoms are not unrestricted. This wall is not your private property, so you have no right to do so, and this is unlawful. La 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 la! This is my favorite song. It's late at night. You are disturbing the others with your loud music. While we are enjoying rights and freedoms, we must consider the impact on others. You have the right to listen to music, but the volume should not be too high, because this would disturb the others. I got it. Let me put on my earphones and turn down the volume. By the same token, we have the right to express our views by lawful means. But we must not do anything that is threatening to other people or society. Instead, we must respect other people's views and rights and be empathetic. Before doing anything, we must think carefully. While enjoying our rights, we are also obliged to abide by the law in accordance with the basic law. Together, let's safeguard Hong Kong. Let's learn about national security. Be a law-abiding and responsible citizen.